welcome to another episode of Sessions on Life. We are on my mic right We are here for our uh, last session with Eric E2 Tillman, yes. and we have the pleasure of having Eric the Third joining us today. And so today we will be talking about suffering yet again, but we're going to talk about the testimonies of suffering. And so, Eric, let's just open up and people have been waiting to hear your story for a few weeks and we've been yeah. stringing them along so today is that day yes. that they're going to actually be able to hear your testimony and we've got eric the third here who may have some things to say to share from his perspective of what it was like uh to go through that experience yes 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 definitely so uh thank you again josh thank you um, sessions on on life podcast for having me yet again i appreciate it i'm grateful for the opportunity i'm grateful to um you know be able to tell uh people about what jesus has done in my life one and two yeah. be able to tell the testimony um so you ready to dig right into it let's go jump, jump right, right into let's it jump right into let's it. do it then let's do it then so um i'll start at the beginning so at uh on August 3rd um, of 2019, I was um, doing a concert. I was at a concert. My whole family that was there, Eric was there. Um, so tell us just a little bit about your family before you jump in. Yeah, so um, my, my wife, who we have been married for 14, going on 15 years. Um, and then it's my oldest son who's here with me today. It's Eric uh, Tillman the third. He's the third. And I got my middle child. He's his name is Elias, man. He's he's the rambunctious guy. He's the <laughs> one that's yeah, he's the one that's gonna test you. He's the one he's a wild one. But um he he's very, very overprotective of his brothers and stuff too. So if they they in the trouble or doing something with somebody else or somebody trying to mess with them, he's gonna he's gonna step in. He's, he's gonna he will he stepped in for Eric before. So <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's and it's it's funny, man, because um I, we didn't name them um, without being strategic about their names. Right. So, um, you know, his name even means God is my protector. His, his, his name is Elias Gabriel. Yeah. So, yeah, man. And uh, Eric, his name means ruler. And uh, he has that leader mentality, man. He wants to be. He He's he's almost in every situation he's he's that trying to be that alpha male. And sometimes that backfires because, you know, <laughs> him and other other boys in the same place it it may not go over well so but um yeah and then we have evan the youngest the one that we'll be also talking about um today um he he's man he's the he's the life of the party man he's the life of the party he's he light up the room when he walk in and he's always wanting to be in the middle of something so yeah he he's the one uh most like my wife he's most like my wife he stayed by her side and so yeah man um my, my wife like i said we've been married for uh 14 years um love her caring loving uh great mother great wife i couldn't ask for a better wife man but um yeah that's my my uh family in a nutshell kind of okay okay yeah. getting some brownie points too. yeah love man it. gotta get those brownie points got it got to got to excellent and so you said back in 2019 yeah back in 2019 so um uh 2019 and it was august 3rd uh i was actually in clinton indiana um that's where i had the concert at um some friends some family members of one of the one of my friends um ended up booking me out there yeah. And, uh, you know, had the concert, did well, God moved, God moved. Um, it was an awesome concert. I remember we was outside. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold. Um, had nice. a real good time. And uh, I went to tickle Evan, my last son. He was four at the time. Um, I went to tickle him on his neck. And then uh, I felt some bumps on his on his neck and uh, some lumps on his neck. And uh, I was I went and grabbed my wife and I was like, babe, like, we need to come look at this. I don't know what's going on. I don't, you know, yeah. it's um, it, it, if something looked like it's going on, we might just need to get him checked out or something. But anyways, um, after that, um, she checked and she was like, oh, we probably need to head home. We probably need to go get him checked out. Right. And it, the crazy thing is I had a friend there. Um, his name was uh, Brian. Brian. Yep. 
Brian, thanks, Eric. His name was Brian, and uh, he he was a nurse. He mm-hmm. was like, yeah, just go get it checked out. It's probably some type of infection or something like that, you know, some type fighting off some type of virus or something like that. I'm sure it's not cancer or nothing like that was what he said. Right. Um. So we go to – this was on uh, Saturday night, I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe it was Saturday. And um, so we just take him straight, straight to the um, ER, you know, just see, you know, what's going on. We get to the ER and um, we we get a whole bunch of different tests ran. You know, some come back negative. You know, um, it's not this, not that, not this, not that. And so the doctor calls us out and uh, he has us come look at his his X rays and um, he says uh, we don't know exactly what it is. This is one doctor. He says we don't know exactly what it is. Um, but we want to send it over to some some friends of ours in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. and we come back come back in, you know, get back in the um, room that they they placed us in, and another doctor comes in and he's like, um, yeah, uh, we don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's some type of cancer or something like that, and uh, you know, at that moment I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You said it's what? He's like, we think it's cancer. I'm like. And when he says that, immediately, you know, we were already praying being in the being in the um the ER and stuff like that, you know, praying just because we didn't know what it was. You know, when he says that, I immediately jump up. I'm like, no, don't say that he got cancer if you don't know what it is. I'm, and then me and him have a back and forth exchange. Me and that doctor have, have a back and forth exchange. And I'm like, look. You got to go if you're going to be talking like that and you don't know what it is. You got you got to go. And I'm like, look, I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke that right. demon right now in the name of Jesus. You know. Um, Just describe that feeling to us. Like when he said, I think this is cancer. Yeah. Like what emotions did you feel? Like was it sadness? Was it despair? Was Yeah. It- so immediately for, for me, I think it was um, towards him, it was frustration. Um Towards him, it was frustration, and I know he was, you know, he was just speaking from what he what he thought. Um, but towards him, it was literally frustration because I'm like, you don't know. But for me, um, I think I went into um, instant prayer when he left. I went into instant prayer, but I don't think that. Um, I, I'll say I'll say this. Me praying comforted me in the in that moment because thinking about it as I was praying I was like God please don't let this be it so so you know kind of a little a little bit of a fear kind of set in you know hearing that hearing that word you know uh, a little bit of a fear set in so I'll say that's probably one of the emotions that came when whenever I heard that but I was praying you know trying combating that you know combating those feelings and stuff like that but yeah that was the, that was one of the feelings you know cuz this it's like a heart dropper you know heart drops yeah. and you know what I'm saying so what was your wife's reaction um she 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 got she got startled too she was startled she was shocked um I believe that she was probably in some type of fear cuz she I'm sure she didn't want to she didn't want to hear that either so um, at that moment, you know, before we knew anything, and I think she ended up start start crying when we were in that moment. And I'm like, look, don't cry. This is not this is not that, you know. Right. Um, you know, trying to be the protector and trying to comfort my wife in that moment. Um, so after that, we had to get scans, you know. Mm-hmm. So they had to, we had to, I think it was, that was Saturday, like I said, I believe. And then it was on Monday when we had to be in um, Indianapolis, if I'm not mistaken. So we had to be in Indianapolis. So it took off really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they put everything into play, like, almost immediately. So how'd you tell your other kids? Like, what was that conversation like? Well, the conversation, we didn't have, we didn't have the conversation with them um, right away because we didn't know at this gotcha. point we still didn't know so yeah You're so like, we're just going out of yeah town we gonna get him checked yeah, out exactly exactly we some we like some may, some may be going on with Evan um but we don't know so we just gonna go down here and he has to get some scans and stuff so that's that's what it was initially for us we so didn't, you do a concert on Saturday yep mm-hmm. Sunday. You're back in the ER. Yep. Monday, you have to go to Monday. Indy. We end. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So yeah, it was because we, we were. I think we were in. We were in the ER through um, through from Saturday to Sunday. 
Um, but yeah, we just, so all within a three three days time span, and we're we're in Indy, and um, I can't remember if we stayed overnight or not. Okay. But anyway, but anyways, okay. didn't Larry take us? No, no, that that wasn't that that wasn't that night. Um, we we drove ourselves up there, I believe. Yeah, I believe we drove ourselves up there, if I'm not mistaken. But um, so. So you get to Indy. Yeah, to get see to a Indy. Specialist. Yeah, exactly. We get to see some um some specialists out there and we um some oncologists and stuff like that. And we they get the scan and they're like, Okay, all right, you guys can go home and we'll call you back with, with results. We'll let you know results and or whatnot. So within that week, um, we find we find out that it is, that it is cancer. Wow. It is cancer. Um and and evan's how old at the time he's four. he's four he's four at the time wow yeah yeah evan is four and we um immediately um my wife breaks down my wife breaks down she um you know she's she's just distraught at this point she's distraught and me being a man so this 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 finding out was a, a really hard and tough place for me because um, hearing that, you know, dealing with my son, you know, dealing with anybody in my family, you know, um, it's devastating, you know, and you know, a lot of times when you hear that, some people don't make it out from it, you know. Right. So what was going through my mind is, um, one, um, you know, I don't want to, um, not be able to comfort my wife because like I said, she's crying, you know, she's distraught. One, I don't want to not be able to comfort her. So I don't want to start wailing and start crying <laughs> so and stuff like that. You know together. what I'm saying? Some, yeah. Somebody got to, you know, uh, be able to hold the other person up. Um, two, the devil is playing on my mind. The devil is playing in my head. See, this is what you get. You This happened because of this. This happened because of this. You know, I'm I'm looking, you know, in, in searching and finding things of why this could happen. You know, neglect. You know, you ain't been feeding them the right thing. You know, all of these different things. Right. And you know what I'm saying? And um, so three. It's kind of like what we were talking about when it says to search yourself. Yeah. You're like, okay, yeah. did I sin? What, what yep. brought this on? Did I do something yep. wrong? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, excuse me. And um, the other thing was, um, okay, I don't want to, God, I don't want to charge you foolishly. Right. And I don't want you to think that I don't have faith in you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so my, I'm, I'm questioning like, um, like all of this stuff is coming at me at the same time. All of this stuff is coming at me at the same time. And I'm trying to figure out how to process it all at the same time. So I was literally in a place and I was stuck. Like I was stuck. We, I was lit. I literally remember the moment when I was sitting in the car you know, my wife is just in the back crying and I couldn't, no tears would come out because um, all of this stuff was going through my head trying to protect her. The devil playing on me. I don't want to disappoint God. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, you know, so all of this stuff is going on. And uh, I can't remember where they, where the other kids were, but they weren't, they weren't with us at the time. I'm not sure if my mom was there at the moment. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Was she was there. Okay. And, um, and, um. So uh, I'm trying to process process all of this stuff, mm -hmm. and um, my wife is like, "Well, well, what's what's going on in your mind? What's what's going on with you?" You know, as she's crying, she's she's asking me questions. So what's what's going on? Because I'm just literally sitting in the car stuck because I don't know what to do. And um, she said, "If you got tears that need to come out, let them out." Mm -hmm. You know, and as soon as she said that, man, they just started coming. Man, they just started coming, and um. I think I think in that moment, what the pivotal, the most pivotal thing to me, uh, for me was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, come literally when di I understood in this moment, and even looking back, I understand what it says when He says, Jesus says, "I will send one like me to comfort you." Mm -hmm. You know, send one to comfort her. Um, he, the Holy Spirit literally comforted me. And reminded me that I love you. 
You know what I'm saying? He reminded me that I want the best for you. You know, you he reminded me that I, I'm not punishing you. Right. You know, you're in my will. You know, so all, all in all of these, the crazy thing is like all of these scriptures that I thought that I had forgot started coming back started to coming remember. back to me. You know, right. uh, about what about what God thinks of me and, and about how God loves me and He will never leave me nor forsake me. You know what I'm saying? Because one of the, one of the things that um I have an issue with is wanting wanting to remember scripture. You know, it's so many like I I like when people rem- remember scripture. Um so that's one of the one of the things that like and and I don't do it well. I don't remember right. scriptures well. But in in this in and I understood too looking back that this is what it means to have the word in your heart. Right. Because the I couldn't I couldn't tell you exactly what script and verse it, it is, but I knew what he said in his word and I knew that this was in my heart and this was the only thing that comforted me. Right. You know? So yeah, that that was probably the most pivotal moment. Um, you know, God reminded me of who He is, and that and that's that's what's great about Scripture. Yeah, like when uh, you go through something, it yeah. comes alive. Yeah, exactly. And it can be confusing, man. Like when mm-hmm. things take you by surprise, and yep. you feel a certain kind of way about the situation, but yet it's still here in front of your face. Yeah, and it's like God, what is the point of this? Exactly. Why am I going through this? Exactly. And, you know, like you said, you you felt stuck. Yep. Because you didn't want to charge God foolishly. Mm-hmm. And I can relate to that part of it because I have. Yeah. I have. Like, you know, That's I had real. to learn not to get into my feelings. Yeah. Like when things are happening, I'm like, I've been doing this, this, and this, right? And this yeah. is what happens to <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Right, right. Exactly. Maybe I shouldn't live like this anymore. Right. Maybe I should do all the foolish stuff that I think about doing, doing that I don't. Yeah. That's real. But, but when you understand suffering mm-hmm. and that it's part of the territory, like yeah. when you are living for Christ, that we're going to share in that suffering. Yes. And we don't always get to pick what type of suffering it's going to be. Exactly. Right? Because my suffering will be like, it may start today and it's going to end today. Mm-hmm. It <laughs> it's up to me, right? Yeah, right, right, right. And so oftentimes we don't get to pick what that suffering looks like. Yeah. And when it comes, it can catch you off guard. And uh, so you, I, I love how you were transparent about that, like saying that, you know, I was stuck. Yeah. And then your mother said, a certain thing that kind of got you out of that. Yeah. It's like if you have tears to cry, let them out. Yeah. And stuff. It's like you don't have to be strong for everybody. Yeah. It was my wife that said that. Oh, yeah. your wife. It was said my that. wife. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because she was. Even, it was me and her. Yeah. It was me and her better. sitting in the back. Yeah. So so she said, if you have tears, let them yeah. out. Yeah. 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 It gave you permission. Yeah. To be vulnerable. It's like yeah. We know what it is. Yeah. Exactly. And I commend my wife for that, man. She. You know, even even in this, like, she helps me and has been helping me, like, express myself, you know, and be vulnerable and, and be in a safe place for me, man. And that's I, I salute my wife all the time for for that, man, for for letting me be able to express myself and let me let me be able to be vulnerable when when our, men's culture is most of the time um, not to be vulnerable. Right. You know You're what I'm saying? Macho. You yeah, don't macho, yeah. You don't get hurt. Yep. Yeah. So after you found out what it was Mm -hmm. and, you know, you got that news a week or so later after coming back home, what was the next step like to to treat for treatment or what was the next steps like? Like once you were in the middle of it and you got used to that initial information of this is cancer. Yeah. My four year old has cancer. Yeah. And so like what was that like day to day? Just knowing that, like, what was your prayer life like? like yeah. Was it something that you prayed about, like, all day, every day? Or yeah. was it a point of prayer just every night? Yeah. Like, so, um, for for us, um, every waking moment was um, focused on that. I felt like every waking moment was was focused on that. And I would try to do um, different things, things here and there, just to try to keep my mind, you know, occupied. off of it. But, yeah, yeah, occupied. And, um, but for the most part, I felt like every waking moment was that, thinking about that, trying to process that, trying to do research of um, natural holistic things in mm-hmm. prayer, in prayer. Um, we, um, we, we, 
the after after the Holy Holy Spirit reminded me of who he was, um, that's when I clicked. It clicked. It switched. I'm like, okay, okay, God, I hear you. So now my my focus started to change from um, what's going on, what is this, to um, what do we need to do, and who will this help? Um, because I understood that, you know, God still loved me. And like I, like I mentioned before in that song, I had to remind myself that God still loved me. So, um, so that's, that's what my, what my, my every day was trying to figure out what we need to do, how we need to prepare. But it drove me, it drove us, our whole family to prayer. It drove, I remember, um, a couple of days he was praying like, he prayed the house down. He prayed the house yeah. down like nobody ever did. So, um, man, I, I thank God for that, um, you know, that peace. And it, it, I think it not only was just for that one time, but I think it, it rooted it rooted something in him, right. um, you know, uh, for a lifetime. Some, right. It rooted something in him so, for a lifetime. So, Eric, Eric the third, let me ask you a question. So, when you found out that your brother had cancer, like, how did you feel? So, uh, uh, my mom had told me to come back to the room after she was crying and stuff. And once I came back there, she was like, buddy, uh, my brother has cancer. And at that time, I really didn't uh, no. know what that meant. Like, right. I was like, is he going to lose his hair? I like, I was like, yeah, he's probably going to do that, but he's probably going to grow it back and stuff. But at that time, I did not know what he was going to be going through at the time. And so I didn't cry at all because I never knew what was going what he was going to be going through. And at that time, gotcha. I was just like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I yeah. imagine you guys all learned a lot about cancer. And oh, yeah. Different things as a family. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like you said, it rooted mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, you know, even when it comes to, to telling, you know, telling his his siblings about it, you know, um, that was a, that was a very tough thing, you know, um, mm -hmm. letting them know he didn't, he, like, like he said, they didn't understand fully, but, um, we kind of schooled them on, you know, what it was and, you know, how our life was going to change now, um, you know, and what, and what it was going to be like. Right. And so, um, we, like I, like I said, we, we let them know exactly what it was and we had to go through, um, I think it was five rounds of chemo, five rounds of chemo. And, and those were all trips to Indianapolis. Yeah, all mm -hmm. trips to Indianapolis, all trips and um, overnight stays and stuff like that. And uh, the crazy thing about the time, we, right around when we found out, the car that we would have been using to travel um, went out. Wow! So it went out. It went out. And um, and uh, man, it's, it's like it's like just keeping it on, yeah, God. Yeah, just keeping it on. Yeah, man, but um I didn't tell you I didn't say anything about this um in, in, until today. I didn't say anything about um what I'm going forward to say until now. This but, is what we've been waiting for yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um but um so it went out, you know what I'm saying? And you see you see the car that I got, right? Mhm. Mm that came from um, speaking up and you know letting letting people know like look we didn't we don't have a vehicle you know because and we were having to pay for hotels when we stayed there you right. know the the um, hospital would only take care of of uh, like half when they could so we had to come out of pocket a lot you know gas all this stuff mm -hmm. they gave a little bit whenever they could but uh but um yeah the the car that I got that came from that. Really? Yeah, the car that's out there. Yeah, that that came from that. So my man is driving a newer, <laughs> uh, a newer uh, Camaro, a and, convertible, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's nice, and, super nice. And guess how much it cost me? Guess how much? Share with us. Nothing. Wow. It was completely free. Wow. Completely free. Uh, my friend, he said, uh, "Yeah, I got a car. I got a car for you. Um, if you still need one." And I was like, "Yeah, we we actually do." Man, um, that's a blessing. Because we were we were renting cars, like I said, we were renting cars and everything to to get out of town, get out of town, and even like he mentioned earlier, one of our friends had to uh, take us out of town one night because you know cancer is a whole different ball game. Um, so if he gets a fever, I think it was above like 
one hundred point four. Mm-hmm. So uh, we would have to rush him down to Indianapolis. We had to do that a few times. So the the car was out, you know, and it was in the middle of the night, and we couldn't um, we couldn't uh, go rent a car at the time. So we right. had to call a friend to come get us. Now, now you got to drop that friend's name. Oh, that's Larry Scott. Larry Shout Scott. out to Larry Scott <laughs> for being yeah, clutch. Yeah, Larry Scott. Yeah, it was Larry yeah. Scott. Um, Man, that's amazing. And yeah, Larry's a good dude. I yeah. met him in college. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's how we met. <laughs> met yep. in college. Yeah. Pastor Larry now. Man, that's amazing. That's yeah. awesome that you have friends like that. Yeah. And I, I think that that really speaks to when the Bible talks about us suffering with our brothers and sisters. Yeah. And stuff, letting it be known. Yeah. What we're going through, like yeah. you say, you were blessed with a car, yeah. And then you know, before Suffering. a car, you had a friend, yeah, who was willing to suffer with you, yep. and say, you know what, I'm getting up in the middle of the night, I'll take them wherever they got to go, and yeah. you know, I'm sure he had a job or something, yeah. he had some arrangements yep. to make and stuff, and so he, he was had to willing, leave his family, and, right, to yeah. take you wherever you needed to go. Didn't know how long you'd have to be there. Yep. That's amazing, but but I, I love how the Bible. You know, shows itself to be true. Like mm-hmm. when you share in that suffering, yeah. how God's people come together, yeah. and how amazing things happen. That that's awesome. Yeah, man. I, I I thank the body, man, because the body really was my back. Um, you know, because like we talked about earlier, you know, us as men, we don't like to depend on people. We don't right. like to ask people so for things. Myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We like to do it on our own and this and that. But the body really was standing for me you know standing in that guy got helping out doing doing so many different things um you know i can't i can't even name the amount of things you know that that people did and people said calls and stuff like that right um so like when you said you shared what was going on and that sort of thing mm -hmm. like what bit of advice would you give for someone going through something Mm -hmm. that they're maybe keeping to themselves why why share and how how do you share? Like, well, was it like a testimony that you gave or how did you share that? Cause sometimes it's difficult for people to figure out, well, how do I say this? How do I share this? Yeah. When do I share this? Yeah. Um, one, one, one thing that I was, that I'll say, and you're speaking about, you know, how do you share that? You know, your son you're going has, through something. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll say this, um, especially as the body, um, like we talked about, you're not the only one that's going through something right. or going through this. Um, definitely don't isolate yourself because in in a sense, I almost did that because I felt like, you know, people, I don't know anybody that's personally been through this. Right. You know, reach out, uh, find groups, find other Christians that can give you help and give you counsel and lead you to the right place. Um, and for me... You, you just have to understand that this walk of life, period, is not on your own. Right. So that's what I had to come to terms with is that I'm not alone. I'm My family are is not the only people. My family uh, need help, and um, it's people with resources that can help me. So reach out. So that's what that's what I say. Real, you have to realize that you're not you're not alone, and it's people that's willing to help. Also, it's and people that's willing to ask. ask. Yes, yes, ask. ask. Well, the Bible says you have yeah. not because you yeah, ask that's not. not. Yeah. yeah. So that that's so true. And so, so did you meet other families that had children going through the same thing? Yes, that you were yes. Going through? So um, the the dope thing, like I said earlier, I um I my focus changed to like, God, okay, who is, who is this for? Is it, is it, you know, I, I told my wife that this is going to be not just for our family, but it's going to be for other people. Right. Um, one of the things that I learned is and saw and realized is that one is that it's reshaping other people's faith. It's reshaping other people's faith that may have lost faith or, or may have thought God didn't even work in this uh, capacity. You know what I'm saying? They didn't understand if God still work, worked in his capacity. Right. Um, and two, um, not only that, my family's faith, It like I, like we t- talked about earlier, it it brought my my family's prayer life to a different place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it even worked on other kids' faith. And I told, told friends, like, look, tell your kids that 
this is a direct result of their prayers for Evan. You know, so it is still something in children in, at a young age. Right. Yeah. And also, it's a family now that me and my wife are in contact that, that are going through the same thing um, or similar thing that their son has cancer and mm -hmm. they're going through it. They don't know what to do. They need guidance, too. They don't they don't have anybody to bounce off of. So we get to be for them what we didn't have. And now we're able to help them go through some things. We're help them, able to help them do research, help them, uh, you yeah. know, guide them on, a, on the process and even how to navigate with different nurses and doctors and things like that. Right. Letting them know that, yes, it's okay to get a second opinion. Yes, it's okay to express um, how you're feeling to your doctor. You know, let them know what, what you feel about this and what you're thinking. You know, you have a say because that's your child. You know, um, definitely empowering them and being able to pray with them. You right. know, so um, it's like sharing in the suffering. Yeah, sharing in the suffering, yeah. sharing in the suffering, man. And so how long was this whole ordeal? Like from yeah. the time you found out to the uh, time like you you felt that things were going to be OK to be being, yeah. being passed. Yeah. OK. So um, it started, like I said, in August. Um, from there, I believe that we started chemo almost immediately, almost immediately. So from August um to i want to say i think it was either october or november and then um that was that was the chemo time span and then in and so the picture that you that i saw online on mm -hmm. i believe on your instagram page there was a picture where your son's standing in front of you mm -hmm. he's he's got patches of hair missing mm -hmm. where you could tell that he's taking some treatments yeah and he's got this uh scarring on his neck mm -hmm. and that sort of thing and you're and you're he's standing in front of you with tears in his eyes and you're leaned over like you were praying like where in the process was that how far was it middle at the beginning or what was that because that was a powerful picture yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to remember exactly um where it was i'm sure it was in the middle because it went it was when he had lost most of his hair was hair, gone yeah yeah most of it was gone it was, it was in the middle i can't remember what what it was that we were that we was talking i think we was talking about talking to him and we was trying to help him process some things or why he couldn't do something mm -hmm. um in 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 that process but um yeah it's it's so many different so many different situations and so much strength that i saw in evan himself man um but i think i'm pretty sure that 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 picture was probably in the middle of, of the process and um he 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 had to take on a whole new mentality. Mm -hmm. Um that that dude is like one of the most resilient kids I know, man. Um he it I, one specific moment, one specific moment that almost bring me to tears is um we were we we he was getting a chemo treatment and um the whole family had to come with us this time so his brothers and stuff was with him and a lot of times we wanted them to be in at least in the city because his brothers is is his you know they his road dogs you know his yeah. he love his brothers well you got big brothers or exactly else. exactly so he he loves his brothers look up to his brothers so he you know we didn't want to strip that away from him you know with everything else changing but um it was this one specific time we were at, we were at riley hospital in indianapolis and we um he had to get a chemo treatment and so uh you know he at this point he knows the process he know he he has to get you know get his port in get the chemo through his port that was in his chest and stuff like that but he he cries because he know you know he getting stuck and stuff like that so right. um he was crying you know and where we were at the other kids could hear um so they were out in the in the on the side playing but they could hear him and so he was crying and he was crying he, uh, you know um about to get stuck and i think it was elias i don't i don't remember if eric came over but my middle child came over and came and looked behind the curtain he said and um evan he stopped focusing on what he was going through. And he said, Elias, Elias, go, get away now, get away now. You don't want to see this. It's going to be blood. Get away now. Go, go, go. And he, while tears was coming down his face, he's trying to protect his brothers from seeing what he has to go through. And I'm like, man, this, 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 that tugged at my heart so, so yeah. hard, man. So um, to see him, 
to be, be strong able to in be that yes, yes, and he, you know, four, four years, years old. old, yeah, four years old. So he's trying to protect his brother, his brothers from, um, experiencing you know, what it, he's experiencing. yeah, exactly, experiencing what he's experiencing and not having to see what he was going through. He, it wasn't the fact that he was embarrassed, but he just didn't want his brothers to Just see, see you know, him like that, or he, he didn't want him to th- him to see. Um, you know what he was going through because he didn't want him to see how messy it was. Right. You know, um. So man, seeing seeing him be like that, man, was is something else. It's a powerful and, moment. Yeah, man, it is a very powerful moment. And to see how resilient he was, you know, yeah. The you would you would have never known that he was going through what he was going through had it not been for um him losing his hair. Gotcha. You know, and um like you. Explaining the story further on after after chemo, we had to actually go stay in um, Riley for I mean not Riley but in Indianapolis for a whole month because he had to do radiation for the mm-hmm. whole first month of uh, January. Man. So he yeah he went through uh, radiation. So we had to take the kids with us, and that was every morning waking up five o'clock right. Yep, and we had to be there at I think at like seven Man. every single morning every day. So was this during school? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we also had to homeschool them. That's that's when they first went on virtual school. So wow. they were they were on virtual homeschooling before COVID you know COVID even, even came. Yeah. And and another thing, we we had been wearing masks all through chemo before COVID had hit. And we oh, so keep, y'all were prepared. Exactly. We was like, welcome to the party, guys. We've right. been here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, Every now now everybody has to wear masks and stuff like that. But, yeah, we have been wearing masks. We have been, you know, distancing ourselves. So, you know, when that happened, um, you know, we were already kind of prepared for, you know, COVID and stuff. We was already yeah. isolated, and we was already keeping to ourselves and stuff like that. During the process, was there, was there ever a moment – where you thought to yourself, okay, it's not getting better, or ever a moment where you started to doubt. Um, because anytime you like you're going through something for an extended period yeah. of time, you have these ups and downs yeah. and stuff. I'm asking the question because I want people to understand what it's like, like when you're going through something, yeah. when you're suffering through something, that it it may change. Like yeah. you may feel. Way up here one day, and then another day. day you're down here, like, or or maybe like I don't know today. I had yeah. to really try to inspire myself. Yeah, were yeah. there any moments like that? Um, not that I can remember specifically. Maybe more so for my wife. She might have some moments like that because I can remember her telling me like she don't know what it's doing or something like and stuff like that. But from seeing, well, yeah, no, no, I take that back. I will say it was some moments because you know, um, from the initial couple treatments um from what he had because he had it all it was all over his body up in his neck in his um pelvic area in um in uh in his spleen all up and down his legs and stuff like that so it was everywhere but so after the the first couple um chemo treatments we saw a dramatic change you know what i'm saying so yeah we saw a dramatic change so but this this neck area over here was you know on his left side was kind of always you know like the focal point where we were focusing that because it it always um that's where it came from that's Mm -hmm. where it started at and so you know going through the scans we saw how good it 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 was you know his body was responding to the chemo so we thought that you know by the by the last chemo treatment you know we wouldn't see anything Mm -hmm. but we still did see some stuff you know um granted they were saying it was like normal activity but we still did see some stuff and things fluctuating and you know we didn't know whether it was you know growing or coming back because we you know we didn't know everything about it but um yeah we did go we did kind of go through you know some things you know like that, some thoughts like that, like, I don't know, but I was just trying to keep faith and keep a, That's a what I was going to say. What was the answer yeah, to that? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just trying to keep faith in, uh, you know, God, I know what you said. I know who you are. You know what I'm saying? So Remind, like reminding reminding myself of that. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, like, you know, um, the process in between is, is really tough, you know, because a lot of people don't know that we actually had to, um, you know, uh, give him give him different um medicines 
by injecting them with the needle. Oh, man. You know, we had to inject them with the needle ourselves. We had to do it ourselves. So, wow. you know, um, I had to do that every time because my wife, you know, she, she was kind of scared to do it. But we had to literally had to trick him, you know, to get him focusing on something else. and Stick him. Yeah, stick him, yeah. Man. You know, yeah, and not only, like, it's so many different layers and levels to it. And, you know, um, what people don't may not understand is, like, you know, he he's still dealing with things from that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? After effects. Um, and so so when did you know that, like, uh, that it was the treatment had taken yeah. that sort of stuff? Like, how did that go? That so, piece of it? yeah, yeah, got you. Um, so as of late last year. So it was... Um, after radiation So late 2020 Yeah So mm-hmm. it was August of 19 mm-hmm. and then, So about a year and a half Yep Wow Yep Exactly Because We were After radiation um, You know We got some We got some scans And stuff like that And we were looking at it And there was some Questionable things So we had to You know Really look at it And pay attention to it You know Getting checkups We were we were getting screens And stuff And scans And stuff like that And make sure We paying attention to it And we didn't You know We, we had to wait To see how it was Moving or how it was operating to see if it was trying to jump back, you know what I'm saying? So not until um, you know, recently, you know, and my wife still and my wife and I, we still see things that we don't like, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it may be, you know, uh, it may just be him being a five year old growing up, you know what I'm saying? Right. It may just be uh-huh. certain things, you know what I'm saying? And it may, you know, um, but I'm I'm sure that it's not coming back or anything like that, but um. We're on high alert now. You know what I'm right. saying? We're on high alert. Everything is sensitive. You know, when he's, you know, when he's feeling a certain way, when he's, you know, um, you know, when he hurt himself, you know, everything is is high alert. We're paying special attention, you know, Today. to him because of his history and what he's been through. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But but now, you know, uh, about um, like I said, it was late last year when doctors told us, um, yeah, you can you can say he's in remission. You Man. know what I'm saying? That, hearing good. that, you know, you know, that's what I, that's what I was waiting to hear. Yeah, God is good. What did that feel and like? I say, when, when and they, I say, and I say He healed. And I say He healed because remission. That's, is that's good. right. Yeah, man, that's what you claim. And and it's like I I can only imagine the excitement. Yeah. Uh, of hearing that news versus when you first heard oh, he has cancer. Yeah. Man. Yep. And you said it was in his neck, neck. and it was all down through yeah, his chest through his and his chest, spleen and, yeah. and everything. Man, that that is amazing. That, like you. Yeah, witness God heal hell. somebody like that. Hell, hell, yes, yes, man. That's that's exactly what it is, man. But um, so what I didn't tell you is in early 2019, I started praying different. I started declaring blessing, and I start blessings over my family, and I started declaring miracles over my family. Yeah. I started declaring miracles over my family and I started declaring prosperity over my fl- family. Little did I know that this is how the miracle was going to come. This was one of the miracles that I had to see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this this is one of the miracles that I had to see, man. So and, and when I when I was going through I was processing that and I was like, man, I told God that I wanted to see miracles. I told God that I wanted to see healing. I told God and I spoke that and I declared that over my family's life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, when 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 we when we say God show me something, we don't we don't get to say how he's going to show us. Right. You know? We right. don't get to so, say how how it's going to come about. But he showed me exactly what a miracle looked like. Wow. <laughs> he showed me exactly what Man, healing that, looked like. I'm telling you like. that's an amazing story. Yeah. Like it leaves me speechless because like I saw it from a distance. Yeah. Like on social media, I'd see something every now and then. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, okay, they're handling this. They're yeah. taking care of this. And and it seemed to be this like uh, just steady, mm-hmm. seamless thing. I'm like, okay, they're handling yeah. this. They're people of faith. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's going good. Mm-hmm. And that's what it looked like from the outside. Yeah. But to be able to hear the intimate details mm-hmm. of the story and how it strengthened your family. Yeah. And how you say your sons and mm-hmm. everybody started praying and it rooted you guys. And uh, to hear how the the body came together to help you guys yes, in that time definitely. that you were going through 
and how they stepped up and were a blessing to mm-hmm. you. Like that just shows the full circle and yeah. the magnitude of what it means to like be in the body Bloody. of Christ. Yes. And yes. Like to share in the suffering and share what it. suffering looks like. Yes. And going through it and, and how it feels to go through it, what you're thinking yeah. and that sort of thing. So I pray that the listeners today have heard something because this was an amazing yeah. story. Like I learned some things that I didn't know today. Yeah. And so, uh, Eric the third. So having gone through this and you got to see your parents go through this and, you know, you got to see your brother, has it changed your relationship with your brother? What has it done to the relationship? Well, I don't really know how to explain it, but. Do you, do you love him more than you did before? Yeah. Well, are you closer than you were yeah, before? I, yeah, I really am to him. Uh, he calls us his best friends. He calls us his yeah. friends. Man, since. that's great. He was separated from other people in school that he could not talk to and he couldn't see at the time. Mm-hmm. And so one time my mom had asked him, who are your friends? And then he said, my brothers. Yeah, man. And that's well, great. He thinks of us as his friends and brothers at the same time. So, Man, that's, that's yeah. excellent, Eric. I've, I've got boys, and some days they're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, Eric, E2, look, that's yeah. how we do because you got your father, you, and yeah. then the third. So, final words. Mm-hmm. What would you tell or what would you like to share with uh, with our audience about suffering and going through and what you experienced uh, what's your final words you'd like to share with them to hopefully uplift them and to encourage them if mm-hmm. they're going through something now or if they go through something in the future, how to deal with it? I'd say trust, and not, and not even to be cliche, but I'd say trust in God and who he is. Not what other people tell you, not what you've heard, um, not what you've, um, well, not what you, not what you think, um, but trust in God in who He is, who He truly is, and He will be that for you. He will be that 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 source of comfort for you, everything that you need. Amen. Hope that that blessed our audience. Before we wrap this thing up, I know that you are a music artist. Yes. Uh, you have some apparel. I'm sure you wrote a lot of great music as you were going through that the people may not know about that they can relate to. So how do they find uh, your music? How do they find your apparel so that you can continue uh, to be a blessing to people and so they continue to follow, uh, you know, the content that you're putting out? Yeah, you can um, find me on my Facebook page, um, Eric Tillman. Um, we also have an AGBTG apparel page that you can find me at. What does that stand for? All glory be to God. Yes. So AGBTG apparel. Um, it, it's an E2 uh, Facebook page. And you can go order some merch or get some merch at AGBTG.com. So that's AGBTG.com. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And also one of the things I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, but one of the things, man, we talk about how different things come from suffering. One of the things that my wife did was she started a juice business, you know, okay. to try to help keep Evan healthy. Um, and, you know, I, I don't even think it was she it wasn't even initially, you know, uh, supposed. To, yeah, exactly. So she just started doing that to, you know, keeping him healthy. And she was posting like things that we was giving him and somebody else was like, hey. Um, I had cancer a few times. Can you please make me make me some juices? And then the word just got out, and then she started living juiced. Living so, juiced. Yeah, living oh. juice. She's on uh, Facebook also. Living All right. juiced. Man, so, so it sounds like some blessings really came man. out of the. Oh, God. When God says He'll restore you, yes. you know, after you've gone through. Yes. That's so true. Yes. Yes, it is. I praise God for your story, for you guys being here today. Um, Ubi would have liked to be here, but he, yeah. he's on, he's away out of town on a trip. And so uh, we had to do this last session without him. And, yep. and I feel like this was a great episode. And so that has been our last episode on suffering, on sessions of life. So follow us, subscribe, yes. hit that like button, share. 
and we'll see you next time. Yes. Thank you. God bless.